ko po ay si Burong Kaka po ha. Tsaka si Rasa Saya. Okay. Yun daw po yung pieces nila. So yung Tunisian song, si Rasa Saya, Burong Kaka po ha, si Malaysian song. situation niya is para a narrator that will uh, 
help the second year adult, the grade 8 students in understanding more the uh, literature kasi sa grade 8 yata ng English may nag-usapan nila yung, yung Asian literature sa East Asia. So makakatulong sa grade 8 student sa situation na yun na parang meron isang presenter ng narrative na, na makakatulong sa mga students of grade 8 English sa Asian literature. Ang performance is yung product niya is a video narrative. Apo, yun. Ang, siguro ang mga pwedeng criteria is about yung editing ng video, yung clarity ng pag... Uh, yung pag-express, uh, yung pag-deliver ng uh, narrative. And siguro kung paano niya ginamit yung mga appropriate materials or references para maging effective siya na narrator of that uh, video presentation. Thank you, sir, from Region 10, Ma'am Team. Region 3 down. Region 3, sorry now, sorry. Okay, yung sa product niyo po, um, yung concern lang po, pwede maging secondary lang yung, ano, yung criteria na kahit paano in-edit, kung paano yung, ano, mas dapat uh, i-focus yung content na doon nung, nung video kasi baka mamaya napakaganda nga ng pagkaka-edit napakaganda ng pagka, pagkaka-narate pero yung content mo gusto mo iparating doon sa video hindi masyado na to Again, mamaya ka po yung rubrics Thank you very much, Tim uh, So yung content do not forget the content so that can be, or that should be a part of the standard. Okay? So we are through with music. So you can further improve that with your region. We go to arts. Region, who will present or uh, share their sample performance task with us for arts. Region, five, okay. From Region 5. Good afternoon, everybody. Yung ginawa po namin na performance task ay combination ng music and art. Okay. Now, our goal is to organize a Sky Lantern Festival entitled Lantern Mo Ilaw Ko. Nakikinig po ba kayo? Yes. Hindi ko kayo bibigyan ng copy ko. Bahala kayo. <laughs> okay. Now, yung role, yung music group, magkakaroon ng presentation of Thailand music kasi yung lantern ay saan ba yung lantern natin? Ay yung festival ng lantern sa Thailand. So, merong mga, ma, merong uh, musician, singers, may uh, awit doon sa part na yon. We have also the musical arranger na magpe-perform. Sa art group naman po, yung production of lantern festival. Nandun na po yung design. Sila na po ang magde-decorate at saka sila na po ang mag-take charge sa program. Yun po ang kanilang task. Isinama rin po namin dito yung mga stakeholders para po maging audience namin. Pampadagdag po ng audience at saka syempre, suporta. Suporta po sa bunsa. Finance, mga finances po. So, um, aside from the stakeholder, we have also in audience ng uh, grade 7, 8, yung third year din at saka fourth year. So, ang situation, school-based lantern festival or the fourth quarter that is, that will fall on Feb February to March. 
sa Jessica D. Ben, pwede uh, Junior Seniors Prom o kaya Seniors Night, pwede rin Valentine's Day, pwede rin Arts Month na ako po sa Feb, o kaya High School Week at saka yung pinakaan dito is yung Foundation Day ng school. Pwede po doon yan ipasok. Okay. Ang product, ang product is the celebration of the Sky Lantern Roy Kratom. Magkakaroon po ng exhibit of lantern made by the students. Pangalawa po, magkakaroon po kami ng video presentation of Thailand art and music. Ang pangatlo, meron po kami fundraising activity. Saan po namin yun, sa paano paraan po, yung lantern po na gawa ng mga estudyante namin, bibilin po yun ng kanilang parents. Meron po dito ang proceed na, na, ano, na fundraising. Mamaya po sasabihin ko kung saan pupunta. Tapos po, ang last ay yung pag-release ng lantern, ng Sky Lantern, with students, stakeholders, and guests. The standard po namin is, yung rubrics, please refer to the TG page. Wala dito na kalagay na page. O basta po, mamaya, tanong nila sa akin ulit. Yung proceed po, ang proceed po ng aming gawa ay yung, yung pera po mapupunta po sa mga estudyante meron uh, mga visually impaired o mga mahina ang vision na hindi kaya bumili ng mga salamin o kaya mapapasok ka ng salamin or pwede rin Uh, bumili kami ng mga bumbilya para doon sa mga classroom na walang bumbilya na hindi kayang bihan ng mga teacher dahil alam naman natin ang mga teacher London, London at Londito Okay, ano pa po? Last na po sir At saka po uh, uh, ang proceeding po ay pwede ibigay doon sa mga students ng mga may mga kapansanan pero mas, may, may mga hidden talent sa arts and music. Yan lang po. Thank you. Thank you, So, sa cards, ma'am. May tamang po ako. Ano po yung end goal? Medyo ang dami. Medyo matami po siya, no? Merong, is it the fundraising yung goal? Is it the festival yung goal? Is it magbebenta po ba yung mga bata? Yung po ba, medyo madami po yung goal. Okay, we would like to share these uh, best practices of Region 5 when we implemented the SELECTS. Naalala niyo po ba yung SEC and the SELECTS in cultural uh, education as an exemplars? We're in the, the division, and the final third is one, is the Tobacco National High School. We're in, not even wait for you, NCCA, National Culture for the Arts, na nagkaroon po kami ng grand culminating activity, na kung saan po we tied with other subjects, isa lang po siyang grand activity na we have uh, initiated. Nagkaroon po talaga ng uh, usapan sa school. And then, ito pong lantern making na ginawa natin, di ba, second grading o yata ito, so it was already rated. And then, yung music, na-rate na, na, na din po sila ng second grading. So, ang, ang pinaka-end goal po namin is the celebration of the lantern. Para po yung lantern is may palipad. So, useless po kung ang lantern nandun lang po sa baba. So, kailangan po may experience ng mga bata na mapalipad po yung lantern. So, wala pong disruption of classes kasi po itatay up natin to sa mga school activities like junior and senior prom bago po siguro mag-start part ng program kasi po baga ang essence ng lantern, release of lantern para pong uh, a belief na good fortune and everything. So isa po siyang activity wherein we are also encouraging sa iba ka ma'am sa SBM. Di ba hindi tayo binibigyan ng mga funds ko hindi po natin tinatay up sa stakeholders. So we are now uh, having this activity as 
resource mobilization activity. Wherein po yung mga lunchers na yun, yung parents invite namin, stakeholders, uh, bilhin kayo ng lantern, mag-wish kayo before napaliparin siya together with the student. So, a family day, nandun na po. Di po yung essence dito is to link with the community, yung community mag-reach out to school. So, shooting two or three breaks na po siya. Thank you, Ma'am Ma Ma Vic. Thank you, Ma'am. Very promising yung activity. Actually, babalikan lang po natin yung task, ha? Ibabalik namin kayo sa task. The task is for you to create a performance task. Ang dapat lagi nating reference is a learning competency. Or if you want, a, in a broader sense, the standard. What is it that you want to achieve? What is your goal? Yung grasps po, this will only be your guide in formulating your task. It is not a program. We're not asking from you to create a program. Ang pinag-uusapan natin, a task that can be given in your instruction. While doing the instruction. Okay. Sabi ko po, very promising yung kanya. But it could be a school affair. Okay. It's a school affair. Ang gusto ko lang, uh, can, I, can I have your attention please? Medyo i-mag-suggest na ako doon sa mga, uh, mga presenters. Kasi kayo na, eto na naman tayo. We have given you the G-R-A-S-P. So nag-present kayo, sinabi niyo rin, the G is ganito, the R is ganyan. What we are expecting is the task itself. Halimbawa, just like the Malaysian MC and the, uh, what is that? Ano, Indonesian music. Pwede mong simula na, Visitors from Indonesia and Malaysia will be coming to your community. The class is uh, asked to perform, a group is asked to perform to entertain visitors. Ganun po. Ha? We do it in a creative way. Kasi instruction po, that will be part of your instructional plan. What I am saying is, please be, be very uh, cautious in creating the activity. It must be aligned to your competencies or particularly to the standard. Kasi yun po yung ating reference. Okay? Ang kagandaan po dito kasi maraming mga creative na mga activities, na mga task na lumalabas. Ang gusto ko lang po matutunan natin, ano po ba ang pwede natin gawin sa kanya-kanya lugar? Kasi we have different context, right? We have different uh, needs and uh, students. So siguro mag-isip kayo, ano bang distinct sa lugar ninyo na pwede nyo i-share dito sa amin ngayon? Yun po. Okay, uh, thank you, Mama Vic. So yan po. So the task is for our learners. Okay? So, pero maganda yun for a school program. So, binabati po namin yung sila ma'am from Region 5 for presenting us. Pero, that can be a school program na po. Okay? So, another one for arts. Region? Ay, so arts muna tayo sir. Arts muna. Uh, for a collaboration, sa atin. Okay, for a... Uh, ito na po, sir. But, uh, na po. But we will see that because we're going to collect that. We will review your uh, sample performance task. Okay, maganda nga po po. Magpapakasakali po kami, makakamitong ama. Maganda. 
Maganda nga po po. So, this is from uh, Region Core Cover Zone. And our presentation of the task is a combination of music and arts. First, we have the goal. Um, this is a showcase of Indian songs being held simultaneously with the Indian art exhibit. So, uh, in our goal, we have the uh, Indian art exhibit, variety of Indian arts, uh, held uh, simultaneously with a showcase of uh, Indian songs sung by a certain group of singers. Our role, the, the role there is artists um, found both in the uh, students and uh, the uh, the teachers, no? So, the role there artist, producer or director of musical show and exhibit. The audience, we have invited guests from the school, from the whole school community. The situation there is, the mere presence as audience and artist during the song presentation and exhibit. We have the uh, performance product, Individual tasks of student artists, that is the creation of a variety of Indian arts and demonstration of talents and singing. And another one is demonstration of understanding of Indian arts and music theoretically by each student through theoretical and practical uh, in practical form. The standard is this is our target demonstrates understanding of salient features of Indian arts and music. That is a very simple presentation of uh, the task uh, from Group 4, uh, Group Region 4A, Calabarzon. Salamat po. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ma'am Kim? situation po is you are tasked to present to your audience an artist. You really state the essence. Present. Situation po, you really state na po natin. Pag situation po, nilalagay po natin yung bata dun sa sitwasyon. So, ang mangyayari po, ano po ba yung sitwasyon ng bata? Ano ba ako dun sa pangyayari nyo? Opo, so ka okay. so, so, ang dapat po sabi natin, situation niya is, uh, you are tasked to perform in through song presentation and exhibit. Okay, as an artist, yun po yung kanyang situation. Ang role na po artist niya yes, is po. Ang role na po as artist. May question, aba, question po. Yung artists po nyo ay pwedeng producer and director din. Ganun po ba yun? Okay. Tapos, ang audience po ay invited guests, teachers, uh, principal, apo. Uh, ginamit ninyo ay sa content. Sa content standard po. Ano po ako? Gana po nyo katagal na expect gawin to? Kasi kung buong school po ito ang dami po. Individual kasi nang sabi niyo po, individual tasks. So napakadami po nito. O ano po yung, ano po yung, ano, yung, depende po ito sa number, dapat ng class, students niyo po. Okay po. Ang um, gusto ko lang po maninawan, uh, are we trying to uh, focus on um, a school's performance or a classroom's performance? So, pwede ang school. Pero, ang idea po namin dyan, 
is just uh, one classroom. That's why we put there as our audience. We would like to invite guests from the whole school community, the teachers and other students. Kaya po ganon, dahil nakapokus lang po sa isang classroom activity. So, so now that we know, specifically po pala ang pagkakaste. Thank you very much. Thank you po ma'am. Actually, maganda po yung idea niya kasi art exhibit and soft present showcase po talaga ng both talents na po, no, po. Both subjects. Ano po, ano lang po, yung pagkaganap po yung gusto niyo mangyari, yung situation part po, kailangan po talaga siya specific po para saan po ba yung sitwasyon ng bata. Ano po ba ako dito? Ano po po gagawin ko? Ano po ba yung hahanapin ko? Pe-prepare niyo po siya na ito yung mga taong haharapin niya kasi sila yung pagpapresentahan niya. Kailangan po specific po dun sa audience niya kung yung school community, sino po sa school community? Teachers ko lang ba ang manunood? Um, principal ba kasama? Ganun po. Kaya po very specific po talaga kasi we're trying, kapag present niyo po sa bata yung ganitong klaseng grasp, Very, ano po, parang guide na po ito eh. Nire-ready niyo po yung bata kung ano yung pwedeng maging scenario niya pag pinaresent niya na yung produkto niya. So, pwede po pala because uh, this is for grade 8, ang pwede po namin maging audience ay yung nakakaintindi ng art at sa uh, Indian songs. Pwede po lahat ng sections ng grade 8 ang manood sa isang section. Okay. Actually, pwede po yun. Sa iba pong schools, meron po actually yung nangyayari. Naging invite talaga sila ng experts from the, from, the, from the nearby communities. For example, yung teacher po, may kakilala po na expert sa Indian art. Okay? So, invite po niya, manonood po siya. Para, para, para po ano, para talaga i-showcase yung talento o yung produkto ng mga bata. Ganun po. Pwede pong ganun, nangyayari po talaga yun. For example, uh, yung uh, invite niyo po ay fine arts major talaga. O kaya naman po sa music composers or talagang from different universities yung manunood. Pwede pong ganun. Para talagang mas ma-challenge yung mga bata na mag-perform to, the, to their utmost excellence. Ayan po. Okay, uh, Ma'am Marie B would like to show us uh, some more examples of a uh, performance task. Okay, so maganda po ano kasi lumalabas na po yung bawat isa sa, sa bawat isa sa atin ko yung pagkaunawa natin about the performance task. But this one will give you examples or samples of performance tasks according to uh, the levels of assessment. So this one is an example. I think you have a copy of that. This one is a sample performance task for knowledge. Ang sinasabi po natin, let's create a task that is authentic or and creative. Okay, let's have it as, an, uh, as our example. Ito po yung task. May I request everyone to please listen para po, para pareho po yung ating um, understanding on what a performance task is. Kasi baka nagkakamag, nag-interchange po ito sa school activity or celebration or festival okay so tignan natin this is one example for a task in knowledge it says here your class is creating an activity about ways to keep fitness so first line pa lang alam mo na ko ng topic do you think what is the topic what is the topic the topic here is Physical fitness. Okay, your class is creating an activity about ways to keep 
feet. Now, you and a partner have been selected to be fitness advocates. Yung katulad na sinabi kanina. In the activity, your goal, very specific siya. Your goal is to help others learn ways to be physically fit. How would you convince your target audience about the importance of physical activity in achieving the desired level of fitness? What physical fitness terms and principles would you use in the activity that will indicate how much you know about the concept and principles of physical activity? May nakalagay na note dyan. Kasi hindi ibig sabihin na yan po ay sample, yan na po ang gagawin nyo. Pwede po kayong mag-deviate. You can recreate, you can add value. Okay, what is the note here for teacher? Teacher may suggest or draw out activities that learners might want to undertake, such as poster making. It could be a play or a debate. Ayun. Tignan po natin yung rubrics na binabanggit. Although we're not yet uh, discussing about the rubrics, but we want to share with you the connection of the task and the rubrics. Right? The connection of the task and the rubrics. Ano po yung tatlong, ba dalawang bagay na tinitignan natin sa rubrics? One is the knowledge on of the concept and principles of physical activity. The second one is the appropriateness and accuracy of the terms used. Kita nyo, yung dalawang kondisyon, kailangan daw po yung terms na gagamitin ay appropriate and accurate. Baka naman hindi related to physical fitness ang ginamit niya. Well, the second consideration is, is about the knowledge of the concept. What do you know about physical fitness? So, tatlo po yung ginamit na, ba, na, na sa ating rubrics. We have the novice, intermediate, and exam plan. So, nasa atin na po yung pagdidetermine ng, ng point. So, ang point ko po dito, ang activity must be authentic. Kasi pwede naman talagang ang mga bata ay maging advocates of physical fitness. And very simple lang po ang goal niya. Just to convince others. So if I am the one doing that activity, pwede kong isimulate yung usapan na magkaibigan. Di ba? And then from there, ang titig na ng guro o kung peer assessment man siya, ang titig na niya, ano yung mga terms na ginamit niya while convincing the friend. Right? How accurate is the knowledge or the the knowledge and understanding of the concept of physical fitness? So yung pang susukatin mo, kasi ang napansin ko lang po, very creative tayo in in uh, in formulating our task, pero nawawala po tayo dun sa ating na is na assess. What is it that you want to assess? So in this example, we are just assessing what level knowledge because you're only assessing the terms, right? You're only assessing probably the definition, the understanding of the description, how the, the student can define, can describe what physical fitness is. So it's just a knowledge assessment. This kind of performance task is an assessment of the knowledge. And the topic is physical fitness. Second, Okay. This is another example. Nasa inyo pong material na rin po yan. Sample performance naman po for skills or process. Let us read the activity. Pwedeng letter. Hindi naman kailangan laging may presentation. <laughs> Hindi laging ganon. Huwag po tayong makahon sa mga ganon laging presentation or festival or production. Pwede pong may letter. And the letter goes this way. Dear student, parang ang dating nito, pwedeng gawin ng teacher, pagpasok ng klase, mag-post siya ng malaking letter dyan, parang announcement. And then the students will read. Dear students, or student, 
we will be hiring a student assistant for our sports club. Kung wala namang sports club sa school nyo, to be student assistant in the physical education department. Okay? The knowledge and understanding of exercises are of paramount concern. While the sports club believes that designing an exercise program is a personal thing, the applicant should be able to demonstrate competence in designing exercise program for members of the club and in performing the exercises. Exercises must be fun and responsive to the physical needs of the club members. So saan mo i-judge ngayon yung bata? So pagdating sa klase po, ang scenario as in someone is applying for the job. Okay, let's say si Ma'am tumayo dito. Babasahin niya ngayon yung application letter niya. And what will be judged? Do sa application ng teacher? The application for the position shall include the proposed exercise. So, the applicant must propose exercises. At the same time, must able to perform these exercises properly. Okay. So, hindi ba? Pag pinagawa ko yun sa bata, ano ang na-measure mo? Skills ng bata on how to design exercises. At the same time, na-measure ko how how good, how good in executing the, the skills, the exercises. So it's an assessment for skills, for process. Anong skill ang minimeasure mo dyan? Performance and or performing exercises and designing exercises. Dalawang skills. See? Anong gusto kong sabihin dito? Let's be very clear about what to assess. Kaya yung unang matrix po ni Jerry kanina, that is our starting point. Be very clear about what to assess. What you really want to assess. If you want to have that fundraising project, is it related to any of the learning competencies? Right? If you want your students to fly the lantern, tama ba yun to fly the lantern? <laughs> to, basta, to release, to release the lantern. Is that in, uh, is that in congruent to our learning competencies? Are we addressing any of the competencies? So let's be critical in formulating our task. Make sure that we are clear about what to assess. Another example for understanding. Okay. Ano yung sinasabi natin understanding? So understanding refers to general or big ideas, the core message, diba? Your takeaway. So in this kind of performance assessment, what what we did was we will be our wow, what we are suggesting is we will be uh, giving them a statement. The only person who has the full control over you is you. What is your comment on this? Why? Ano bang understanding ang gusto natin take away? That physical fitness is a personal responsibility. Yung sagot ng bata dyan na something to do with yung personal responsibility of, uh, or being personal uh, being or what is this? Ang hirap mag-English? What was Yes, kaya ko to doing. Kaya ko to. <laughs> can I call a friend? Doings, can you help me? Ang ibig ko pong sabihin, para mas madali ko magtagalago, ang ibig ko pong sabihin, that particular statement there will elicit, right? The insight, the idea, the message. Di ba? Because you will be drawing out from your students. And with that, they are creating understanding. You're already soliciting understanding. Yung answer ng bata will be assessed using the matrix 
may beginner, intermediate, advanced. Anong titignan natin sa understanding? No evidence, reasons of realizations provided in responses that reflect the given understanding. So pag sinabi niya na, ay, yeah, I agree that, uh, that uh, no one is, uh, has a control over you except you. But no, uh, no reason given, right? No evidence cited. So it could fall under beginners. Pero kung nung in-explain niya, when she was explaining or he was explaining about her thoughts, about her ideas, and she has provided realizations. She has provided evidences. She has provided reasons. That could fall under advanced level. So this is one example of assessment for understanding. Okay? Kaya iba-iba po yun. Iba-iba. Ano yung pinaka-last? Ang pinaka-last po is uh, the assessment for transfer. Ito po ay uh, sample assessment for grade 7. Remember that the performance standard there is for your student to create a plan, a personalized plan. Kaya ito po yung previous, uh, binigay o sinagest na rubric. Okay? So, uh, ang sa akin lang po, walang mali. Pansamantala, walang mali. Kasi lahat naman tayo nag-aaral. But be mindful of what is being assessed. Yun po ang number one consideration natin. If you're creating a task, make sure that you are clear whether it's a task for knowledge, task for skills, task for understanding, or a task for transfer. Okay? So, yun naman po. Uh, yung iba, medyo okay naman kaya lang, let's be more creative. Baka meron pa tayong makuha. Okay? And then we'll compile all of this. Baka lahat tayo pwede magkaroon ng gano'n. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Pamabi. Now, since meron pa tayong uh, isa pang topic na kailangan pag-usapan, we will just call one for PE and one for health. Kasi... Alam ko, gutom na rin kayo. Okay? Pagod na, okay? So, for PE, meron na po, ah, uh, sorry po, ah. Meron na po, from Region 2. So, let's, let's hear from Region 2. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. For Region 2, it's quarter 4, Regional and Philippine Dances with Asian Influence. So our activity is a simple cultural show on the Now that you have learned the different local regional dances with Asian influence, you will stage a cultural show showcasing the dances learned in the class. So for our goal, perform regional dances and Philippine dances with Asian influence to promote lifelong fitness. So the role of students, organizer, planner, at the same time performers. The audience, since grade 8 are focused, family involvement, our first audience natin dapat family, schoolmates, and then teachers. Situation, cultural show showcases seeing the dances that they have learned. Product, documented performance through videos and make a narrative report based on the dance performed. In the narrative performance, what are the problems encountered? The next, what is the impact? What are they called? The impact of this performance in their physical fitness. Kailan hindi tayo, hindi lang nakafocus sa activity per se, but then the impact of the activity to the students. At huwag din tayong aalis dun sa lifelong or wellness activity ng mga bata. And then, standard, perform skillfully regional and Philippine dances, to promote lifelong fitness and wellness in the family. And this, through this, we can also make, design our own rubrics. Good luck po. Thank you. 
So, question ma'am. What level of assessment are you uh, assessing? Is it knowledge, uh, process, understanding, or application? Saan po yun? Saan po yun? Performance. Product. So, product or performance. Yun yun. Kasi execution. Okay? Uh, any ano po? Any comment, suggestion? Is that good? So, na-translate na nila into narrative statement. Okay? So maybe we can proceed to help Region 8. Okay, good afternoon po. The first topic in health in Region 1 is gender and human sexuality. Um, our goal is that we wanted to, our students to learn what is gender and sex issues. So what are the genders, gender and sex issues. Then the role is that um, we, we will ask the student to identify what are the activities of male and or boy and girl para malaman natin kung ano ang um, gender and sex issues all students are uh, all students will be involved in the class so one student will be asking another student and everybody will be asking questions of what are the maybe in a group they will be asking questions of what are the activities of male and female then next that is that then, of course, they're going to list down the activities and the, the definition, maybe, of male and female by them. Okay, that, those are the activities. So, our, our target is that the students will be able to identify by, this, by issues concerning sex and gender and to come up with the conclusion of what is sex and gender. Um, yun ang gusto namin malaman kung anong gender at saka ano ang sex. Um, with that, if, we, if the students will be able to identify the gender issues and sex issues, they are going to formulate a poem or, poem or, or a song um, telling, maybe as a group of students will be assigned for a, a song and one will be a point, dramatize this one or whatever, then from there, the performance will be rated according to the rubrics that we are going to set up. Thank you. Sir, may mga sinulit lang ako. Okay, so your goal is to identify the gender goals of the students. Oh. Oh, oh. For example, um, ang lalaki, alam natin na sinasabi na dapat mag, magbuhat la, sila lang ang mabibigat na mga mga, mga um, sila ang magbubuhat ng mga mabibigat na mga bagay. Am I right? Okay. But why do you characterize it? For definition lang ng ng lalaki sa kanila or or boy ano ang definition sa kanila pwede sabihin natin um, boy is um, may muscle something like that oh, pero yung may muscle na yan or nagbubuhat ng mga mga mabibigat na bagay ay alam nila is a gender issue or a sex issue hindi pa nila alam kasi ipaprocess pa natin to so, ano ba, ano, ma-identify natin? Kasi dapat malaman ng estudyante kung ano, yung issue na binigay nila, is it a gender issue or a sex issue? Okay. So, for example, um, magbigay ako ng lalaki ay 
ang o ang babae dapat maglaba. Di ba? Ang babae dapat maglaba. Is it a gender issue or a sex issue? O gender lang siya kasi ngayon mayroon ng lalaki na naglalaba. So hindi siya palagi sex issue. So hindi pwede siyang sex. Ma-define natin na sex. So, kung halimbawa, ang lalaki ay may Adam's apple. Is it a gender issue or a sex issue? Sex. Kasi walang Adam's apple ang babae. So that is, we will identify whether it is a sex issue or a gender issue. Okay. Then, from that, if they can formulate, uh, we can, they can identify many issues for gender and sex issues, then they are going to form now whether they are going to make a song, um, interpret that one, and so on and so forth, then the teacher will now create a rubric on the presentation. So, actually, yung gender roles and uh, gender, gender issues and sexual issues, actually, that can be an activity uh, for knowledge, for process, and for understanding. So that in the transfer phase, you can now do your poem making or whatever you're going to do. So you insert. So, so we should go back to our graphs. Always check what we have done with our performance task with the graphs. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. So always check po yun, ha? Pero very good, yun, sir. So that is that is a start of making our own performance tasks that our region can use or for our schools to, to use those uh, performance tasks. Okay? So, I sir, what, what level of the assessment are you assessing? I forgot. So, it's in the process, but you're you said you're going to make poem. Understanding. Pero sabi ko kanya, sir, you're going, uh, the learners are going to make poem. Diba? Gagawa na sila ng tula nila eh. Process. But it can also be under, under what? It can be a product. Diba? Kasi they have created it. They have added value. Yes. Okay. So they have added value. They have changed what they have learned into something new. And that is creating poem about gender issues and sex issues. The additional post, ma'am. Okay. Masyado maganda yung topic po ng gender and sexuality, right? Gusto ko yung, gusto ko yung uh, goal ni Sir. Simplify natin. Mag-start tayo, tayo collaborative. Gawa tayo ng task on the knowledge level, ang topic natin, gender roles. Or gender... Gender issues. Anong pwede natin performance task on gender issues, ang level po niya, knowledge. Kasi po, ang nangyayari po sa atin ngayon, multiple performance tasks na pagkahalo-halo natin, let's just focus on one area that we want to assess. So if you want to assess their understanding, their knowledge on the different gender issues, let's just focus on gender issues. So example, uh, sabi po ninyo, you want the students to clearly define among these issues, whether it's gender issue or sex issue. Tama po ba? Anong task ang pwede mo ipagawa? Anong task ang pwede natin ipagawa? I would suggest debate. Is debate appropriate? Could be. So yun lang ang task mo, debate. But be very clear about the goal. Ano ngayon ang goal mo? Being able to identify the issues under gender or if it's sex issues. Yun lang ang goal mo. Anong role? Anong gusto mong 
control ng bata. Ano kayo? Mga, mga student leaders. Your role is to um, advocate. Diba? To advocate issues on gender and sexuality. That could be your role. Pasintihan lang natin, liitan lang natin, wag muna natin buuhin. Napakahirap gumawa ng task pag napakarami mong goals. Second, itaas natin ang level. So, ang sagot doon ng mga bata during the D-Day are just identifying the, the issues, right? Yun lang yun, that's a knowledge part. How could it be raised to the next level, which is skill? Paano mo ngayon i-raise yung... Uh, yung uh, level na yun to the next level which is a process or a skill level of assessment. Still, the topic is on gender and sexuality. Okay. Mag-identify ka na ng skill na gusto mong i-assess. Katulad na nakita po ninyo sa mga rubrics, identify ko ng particular skill. I would suggest you analyze the factors that affect, tama po ba? That affect these issues. Why it is said a gender issue or a sex issue. So, you create a task that will assess the skill of analyzing. What are these factors influencing or factors affecting? So, that could be your task for skills. Erase na natin sa next level, understanding. Ano po muna ang gusto niyong understanding na ma-take away ng bata? What is it that you want your students to take away with them? Per, uh, if uh, our topic is gender and sexuality. Ano bang understanding doon? Bakit ba pinag-aaralan ng gender and sexuality? What's the relevance of learning gender and sexuality? Can say unless you identify the understanding for that, sa kamulang makakasaka kala makakapagcreate ng task, right? Ganon po yon. Specific goal, a specific competency or standard to be assessed. Yun lang ang focus mo. Wag masadong marami. Goals or wag masadong marami competencies to be assessed. Just focus on one. And let's be very clear whether it's knowledge, if it's skill or understanding or products or performances or transfer of learning. Okay, po sir. So tatlo na po yung yun ta, hindi lang isa pero iba-ibang levels meron ta. Okay. Okay, so that concludes our topic for performance task. Kaya lang may kulang po sa performance task. Ano po yung kulang? Yung learning how to prepare our own rubrics. So that will be shared with us by Sir Jude Doria. Sir Jude. Hello. Low na lang? Low bat na ba kayo? Yes! <laughs> Mapanipig, low bat na daw po sila. Kaya pa ba? Madali lang po tayo dito sa Rubrix. Huwag po kayong mag-alala. Yan, so our final topic for this uh, afternoon session is Developing Prototype Rubrics. Ano nga ba ang Rubrics? Para sa inyo, ano po ang Rubrics? Eyes on the screen, please. Is this a rubric? Is this a rubric? Why? 
Who wants to answer? Oh. Who says yes? Who says no? Raise your right hand. No. Why no? Sir. Kasi hindi pa naset yung parameters kung paano na rin siya sabihing below average, average, above average, and excellent. Kaya kinakailangan meron siyang mga parameters doon. Okay, wala daw po kasing parameters. Ano ba ito? Nakikita nyo sa harap. Ano po sila? Indicators of? Of performance or proficiency in a certain performance. So the answer is? No. no. How about this one? Is this a rubric? Pre-basic, basic, approaching, proficiency, provision, advance. One, three, four, five, respectively. No. Why? Oh, sir. Salamat sa strawberry, sir. Nagising ang aming... <laughs> so, this is not a rubric. This is our levels of... Uh, levels of... Uh, So, hindi daw po sa rubric. Rubric. Levels of proficiency. At, uy, tama si sir. Is this a rubric? Meron siyang scoring scale, tapos may interpretation sa bawat range ng scores. Yes or no? Who says yes? Bakit po yes? Wala. No, bakit no? Kung hindi siya rubric, ano siya? Po? Yes ma'am, from Region 1. Ah, sabi ni ma'am, wala naman daw po kasi siyang criteria. Kasi pag rubric daw, may criteria. Tama ba? Yes, so the answer is no. What then is a rubric? Rubric is a criterion-based scoring guide consisting of a fixed measurement scale and descriptions of the characteristics for each score point. Another definition we can give, a rubric describes degrees of quality, proficiency, and understanding along a continuum. So, napaka-comprehensibo na po yung ating definition. Sabi niya, criterion based. So meron tayong criteria na sinusunod. Wherein, each criterion, do sa ibibigay natin criteria to assess the performance of our learners, meron siyang fixed measurement scale. Pwede 4-point scale, pwede 5-point scale, 6-point scale, or whatever point scale that we are going to designate. At bawat point doon, although 5-point scale, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, may indicator tayong ilalagay based on those expected na performance na ating mga bata. Okay? Other descriptions, we have a rubric is a descriptive guideline, a scoring guide, a specific pre-established performance criteria. Each level of performance is described to contrast it with the performance at other levels. It provides description of what the specific differences are among performances at each level. A set of rubrics is used to guide the rating of performance, products, or pro processes of student learning at various levels of performances. In our case, we have four levels of assessment, knowledge, processor skills, understanding, and transfer, which includes the product and performances. Yung mga yun po, Pwede natin gawa ng performance tasks, hindi lang yung transfer part. We can come up with performance task, tasks to assess knowledge. Pwede rin to assess processor skills. Ganon din po sa understanding and our products and performances. And we can even come up with a rubric to rate the performance of our students as regards the task that we give them. Rubrics answer the questions, by what criteria should the performance be judged and discriminated? When can we say that this is excellent? Sa very satisfactory. Satisfactory, good, or needs improvement, or poor. 
Pero na, napaka-degrading naman kasi pag lagi natin yung poor, di ba? Kaya nga dun sa... Pag bibigyan natin ng descriptive rating sa ating mga bata ngayon, yung pinaka-lowest level natin is beginning and then developing. Very constructive way, di ba? Ganon din dapat tayo. Hindi yung medyo iba yung dating sa ating mga bata. It might even discourage them of performing well in a certain task that we give them. Where should we look and what should we look for to judge performance success? How should different levels of quality, proficiency, or understanding be described and distinguished from one another? So dito, ito mga questions na ito, ito dapat yung mga guide natin in coming up with our own rubric. And our rubric should have Uh, our rubrics have two general types. The first one is the holistic or we also call it generic. And then the second one is analytic or the rubric with specific attributes. Which do you think is better? Okay, who among you are familiar, familiar with the gen generic or holistic rubric already? Sino na po ang nakakagawa na nakagawa na ng mga rubrics? I think marami na po sa inyo kasi I heard from Sir Sir Jerry kanina they went to I think Ozamis and then the one presenting kanina sa music is very good at rubrics. So I know there are some of you not just Sir from Ozamis marami pong magagaling gumawa ng rubrics. So dalawa pong uri natin generic or holistic is the first one this provides an overall impression of a student's work it yields a single score or rating for a product or performance. Holistic po yung dating niya. Okay? And then analytic, this kind of rubric divides a product or performance into distinct traits or dimensions and judges each separately. Since an analytic rubric rates each of the identified traits independently, a separate score is provided for each. Okay? So, Malalaman natin later on kung how these descriptions are being transformed into illustrations. As teachers, we act as assessors, right? Because we assess for learning and we assess for the achievement of our students. And then, we as assessors should consider the following. Although a holistic rubric is an appropriate scoring tool, when an overall impression is required, it is highly recommended that assessors or us teachers of students' knowledge, process, skills, understandings, products, and performances use analytic rubric. Why? Because the quality of feedback to the student is easily compromised in the name of efficiency when we boil down evaluation to a single holistic score. Analytic rubrics entails the use of independent criteria that guides the teacher in figuring out which aspect of the student's outputs needs improvement, satisfactory, or excellent. Katulad halimbawa sa pag-assess natin ng performance ng mga bata in the performance of folk dances, regional and national. The rating of this group might be the same with the other group, but we can determine we can determine which among the criteria or which among the indicators ang kahinaan ng mga batang ito at dito. Kaso lang, kung holistic kasi ang gagamitin natin, makoconfuse, makoconfuse po yung mga bata na iisipin nila na magkapareho sila ng performance. Halimbawa, mas maganda yung formations nila, mas dynamic yung performations nila. Pero, hindi nila master masyado yung steps. The other group, master nila yung steps, pero, kokonti lang yung formations nila. Nag-play safe sila. So, nabigyan mo ng parehong score itong group na ito, saka itong grupo na ito, using holistic way of assessing their performance, they might be confused na magkapareho sila ng performance. But when we use analytic rubric, we will be able to explain to them that there are strengths and weaknesses of their performance which might be different 
from the way this group performed. So, we figure out natin, may explain natin if ever there are questions to arise. Okay? So, yun po yung explanation natin why we consider analytic rubric as better than using holistic rubric in rating our students' performances. What do we consider or what are we supposed to consider when we develop rubrics? The first one is criteria. Like sabi ni Kanina from Region 1. We should always have criteria. Why? Ito po yung ating reference in judging our students' outputs or performances. Ito po yung nagsiset ng parameters. Sabi naman ni Sir, same from Region 1. Kanina. Okay? They specify what we should look at to determine the degree of understanding and serve us in making a judgment-based process consistent and fair. Hindi yung, oh, ang expected sa ating performance bukas dapat merong formation, may ganito, may ganyan, ganyan. We should establish kung alin doon yung mga i-judge natin. Katulad nung ginawa ng PN Health kahapon doon sa taas, Diba, mamaribig ask you, what should we consider in identifying power standards among the competencies? Sabi po niya, nagbigay po kayo ng mga iba't ibang indicators or criteria. And then we group them together. And then, you were made to realize that those criteria that you gave fall under three major criteria. Yung endurance, yung leverage, saka yung necessity. Ganon din po dapat sa pagbibigay natin ng criteria sa pag-assess ng ating mga bata. And for purposes of validity, we should always check if these criteria that we are setting are in line with the standards of the content that we are teaching. Okay po? So when you talk about validity, this concerns the meaning of evidence. What we ask students to do and how we assess the resulting work. It's about our understanding of the results, not the test itself. The, the, the performance might be very, very excellent, pero is it achieving the goal we set or we prescribe at the start of our um, lab? lesson. For example, uh, ano ba yung content standard natin sa Philippine folk dances? Or regional and national folk dances? Demonstrate understanding of the performance of regional and national folk dances leading to the development of an active lifestyle. For example, ganun po. Yung ating mga performance tasks, when we, when we come up with criteria, they should always be checked against the standards. Okay po? Para merong congruency. Hindi yung nagbibigay tayo ng mga activities and we are assessing these activities, hindi naman pa, wala naman palang kinalaman dun sa overall standard natin. Or yung mga competencies na dapat nating ma-achieve. Halimbawa, nagpa-project tayo, output, pero yung output na yun, mag-submit ng basketball. Wala namang connection dun sa overall goal natin, sa kayong mga competencies natin, di po ba? Mga ganun pong example. Tapos, yung original, mataas ang grade. Yung local, mas mababa. <laughs> yung improvised, mas mababa na naman. May criteria nga naman, pero <laughs> wala pong connect doon sa standard natin. Yun po yung yung ipaiwatig po ng validity. Okay? O, yan na po yung ating ano. Yung relationship ng validity sa assessment. Not just assessment, kundi pati sa instruction sa mga performances. It should always be in line with the results or standards that we set. Okay? Meron po dapat continuity yon at relationship sa bawat isa. Hindi yung kung ano-anong assessment ang ginagawa natin, kung ano-ano ang ina-assess natin. It should always be in line with our standards. Okay? So here is 
a generic or holistic rubric. We have four levels, or we call it the four point um, scale ng pagre-rate. Sa level one, depende po sa atin kung alin ang, syempre, kung alin yung mas mataas yun ng higher, di ba? Oo nga, mas mataas higher. <laughs> Dinagalo. Yung four points po, meron siyang description. Meron din description ng three, two, and one. If we consider four as our highest, then the most ideal performance or the most perfect performance that we expect our students to exhibit should be properly described po dyan sa level 4. And then, pababa ng pababa po. Sabi ni Ma'am Maritik when she was discussing about rubric construction or development, pinakamadali, nagde-deminish, pabawas ng pabawas yung level of proficiency para madali po kayong gumawa. Bawasan yung element sa third, sa second, bawas na naman. And sa first, bawas na naman. And then, come up with the overall rating. Example, ito, rubric in the performance of folk dance. Um, we have four indicators. Yung masterful, that's four, perfect. Skillful, three. Able to apprentice, one. O kaya pwede nating lagyan doon needs improvement or needs guidance. Whatever you wish to uh, give. Needs practice, pwede rin. So for masterful, we have this description. Learner is able to use knowledge, skills, and understandings effectively in interpreting, performing, and staging or arranging a folk dance independently. Kung group performance siya, pwede natin ilagay yung staging and arranging. Po ba, di ba? Di po ba? We should not be confused with the term choreography, which was, which was an issue yesterday. Choreography, as defined by what dictionary? <laughs> Mom points. Is the art of creating dance. A folk dance has a well-structured set of steps through the literature. Meron din po siyang well-defined music, rhythm, etc. Hindi na po natin kailangan mag-choreograph doon. Kung naglagay tayo ng mga formations out of the different dancers who are performing the dance, ang tawag po doon, staging. Okay po? Or, sabi ni Sir Larry, arranging. It's not choreography because we're no longer creating a dance because the dance itself already exists. And for the third one, or second, which is three, skillful, Learner is able to use knowledge, skills, and understandings effectively in interpreting, performing, and staging or arranging a book dance with a little guidance from the teacher. So, nagbawas po tayo kanina independently, ngayon with a little guidance. Konting punta lang ng teacher, pa-advise kung ano yung gagawin, gagawin niya for his performance or the group's performance to be guided accordingly. And then for the second one, or for, for the third, which is two, able, learner is able to use knowledge, skills, and understandings effectively in interpreting, performing, and staging or arranging a folk dance guided by the teacher and classmates or groupmates. Pwede pong ganon. And then yung last na siya, naalis na po yung skill nila in staging or arranging. Just the interpretation and the performance with full guidance from the teacher and group mates. So, pababa ng pababa po. Diminishing. So, that's for holistic. Now, we proceed with the sample of a rubric with specific attributes or analytic one. Yung attribute po, ito po yung mga indicators of performance. And then, for level one, Two, three, yan po yung mga criteria that we set. And then, sa rubric 1.1, yan po yung description ng lowest level of performance in each of the criteria given. 1.2, 1.3. Ang highest po yung 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. Okay? Let's look at an example given. Tinopya ko po ito kay ano, courtesy of Sir Yap. Galina. Sample of a holistic rubric. 
Criteria, we have the following. Works cooperatively with the group. And then, presentation and perspective. And then third one, use of non-verbal cues, voice, eye, and body movements, props, costumes, and then information accuracy. And then we have those um, indicators of performance from excellent, good, adequate, basic. Mag nakita nyo po, doon sa mga indicators of performance, pababa ng pababa yung level, starting from the highest one, which is excellent. And then, Merong kanya-kanyang descriptions sa bawat criteria, criterion, from the highest down to the lowest. So, ganun po yun. And then we have here an example. Nakalagay na yata ito dun sa ano, Team Sports. Sa quarter, quarter 2. So, ito po yung 5-point scale. Example natin for the assessment of performance of our learners in team sports. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then our criteria in assessing, we have 3, appropriateness of skills used. Yung kung applicable ba yung skill na ginamit niya while playing with the other team, posing team. Proper execution of skills. And then, or yung mechanics ng execution and then behavior during the game so incorporated po yung affective um, aspect ng performance nila and then yung perfect score which is 5, ang description ko po nilalagay doon, masterful pababa ng pababa hanggang novice and then may description po nakalagay yung una in terms of appropriateness of skills used while playing Masterful, able to use knowledge and skills effectively and efficiently in diverse game situations, be it offensive or defensive. And then skill, able to use knowledge and skills competently in diverse game situations. Okay? So, medyo may konting, konting pagbaba ng level from efficient to competent. Okay po. Effectively and efficiently yung una, dito competent na lang. And then has limited but growing ability to use knowledge and skills in diverse game situations. Limited but growing. So ibig sabihin improving. As the game is progressing, nag-improve yung kanyang performance. And then the third one, apprentice, relies on a limited repertoire of knowledge and skills and has limited use of judgment and responsiveness to game situations. And then the last one, which is novice, can perform only with coaching, o sinisigawan pa para lang mag-move, o mag-drive ng bola, and relies on highly directed skill execution, procedures, and game approaches. So ito po ay example ng diminishing statement ng performance ng mga bata from 5 4, 3, 2, down to 1. Ganon din po yung ibang criteria. Halimbawa, nakakuha siya ng 4 dun sa first criteria, 5 po dun sa second criteria, or criterion, I should say, and 4 na naman dun sa next, ano na po gagawin natin after? We will add all those scores divided by the 3 given criteria that will be their final rating for the performance task given. Maliwanag po? Gusto ko po na mas malakas. Maliwanag po ba? Yes! Gutom na ba? Yes! <laughs> Dismiss na ba tayo? Yes! Saglit na lang po. <laughs> Steps in writing a rubric. Kasi siguro ibibigay na lang na assignment ito. First one is set the scale. We need to set the scale. Is it a 1 to 3 scale? 1 to 4? 1 to 5? Pag naiset na natin yung scale natin, what will be the next? Sabi dito, select a learning outcome from our academic program. Use your professional judgment to assess student learning on a scale of 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, or 1 to X. Whatever you wish. That is appropriate for evaluating the performance. Next step, identify basic descriptions. Add simple descriptions for each number on the scale. Halimbawa, 5-point scale. You identify that as advanced, and then proficient, and then approaching proficiency, developing, and then basic. Those mind sub-descriptions pa po yun. For 
our learners to be informed more about yung kung ano yung level na 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nawala yung 2. Hindi ko nakawa yung 2. Yung step 2 is come up with criteria po. You have to identify yung mga criteria. Step 3 na po yung nauna nag-jump. Bigla siyang nag-casper, the friendly ghost na wala. Okay po? And then the fourth one, description of what performance will look like at each level. Ayan, detailed description ng bawat level ng punto. Okay po? And then, Tapos na yung rubric. Pwede na tayong magpa-performance task sa mga bata. Okay po? But, we should always take into consideration the factor which we call reliability also. Like for example, when we assess for understanding, iisang performance task lang yung ginawa natin, nag-rely na tayo doon. Eh, malay natin yung napakagaling na bata, medyo hindi feeling well, emotionally uh, emotionally bothered or disturbed, hindi siya nakapag-perform well in the given performance task. We should give them the benefit of the doubt by not giving a single performance task only in each of the four levels of assessment. There should be a number of different performance tasks para ma-check natin yung reliability ng performances nila based on the scores they gain from each performance. Okay po? Hindi lang dapat iisa o dadalawa. This time, the challenge is yours to take. Sabi po dito, select a competency from among the contents in grade 8 mapping. If you are from music, you select a competency from music, Arts for the art group, and then PE for the PE group, help for the health group. Which you wish to teach? Create an activity or performance task for each of the four phases of the learning sequence. What are the four phases? Yung knowledge, what to know, and then what to process, and then what to understand, yung understanding aspect, and then what to transfer. So, apat po yung i-create nyo. And develop your own analytic rubric for assessment to rate your student's performance in the said activity. In your case, you have already come up with your own suggested performance tasks, di po ba? Na sinabmit nyo na po, kaso po, konti pa lang yung nagpasa. And we are also reminding the others from the PNL group to please submit your outputs with the assignment given yesterday. Pagipasa na lang po dito. Para iyon naman po yung ipapasa namin sa management. So, you have already come up with your selected competency and the performance task for the achievement of that competency. Ngayon naman po, ang gagawin natin is to come up with a rubric to assess our learners' performance as regards your proposed performance task. Okay po? Do you have questions? Gutom na? So, Mama Rivik, how is it going to be? Assignment or? So, thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something about my presentation. Thank you, Joe. Okay. So, you can make use of the performance task you have submitted. Siguro based on the suggestions, uh, you please uh, further improve some of these tasks and then from there you create the appropriate rubric. It's your choice whether it's holistic or analytic. It depends on what is more appropriate. Okay, before we formally close this session, may I remind everyone to please take care of your belongings. Alam po ninyo, meron na akong case ngayon, kaya ho, marami akong kinin naman ngayon kasi some of our uh,
friends, some of the participants will be transferring to other places, to other cottages, because their uh, room ano, were, was ransacked, parang ganon. They, uh, it was open, and uh, some valuables were uh, taken. So, we are reminding each and every one of you to please take care of your valuables. Bring it with you, especially yung mga dolyar ninyo, yung mga kaperahan ninyo, the iPads, the gadgets, kasi wala namang mawawala. Lakas lang kasi pagod. But then, it's the good, it's a good uh, way of preventing this kind of uh, untoward incidents. Okay. Tomorrow, please let this and everyone, tomorrow, there will be another plenary session on differentiated instruction. Another session will be conducted on differentiated instruction. So, katulad pa rin yung dami kanina because the TLP group will be joining uh, Values at Baguio City High. Again, sayang yung opportunity. If the session will start at 8 o'clock, kindly come earlier than 8 so that you can, you may, you will be able to occupy the front seats. Mas maganda pag... Aga pa kayo, sir. O, pero ang mahalaga po, sana makapasok tayo kasi magandang presentation din po yung tomorrow. Now, in preparation for tomorrow's session, I don't know if uh, music and arts will also do the same. Can we now, can we now assign regions? Kasi ang, ang workshop po natin is to walk through the teaching guide. I know that you've already seen, scanned, I looked at the every page of this guide. So, can we now uh, assign regions for each uh, quarter at kung ano area? Okay. So, who wants to take care? We are seven. We have seventeen regions. So, each quarter will have four regions, and then one will have five regions. Now. Which or who among you would like to take care of quarter one? Quarter one for PE, quarter one for health, for music, for arts. Okay, by team? Okay, region 10 would like to look at quarter one. What else? Ano pang region ang gusto? Region, kindly write it down. Region 10, 11, I'm sorry. 10, 7, 12, and car for quarter one. So among the group members, you divide the task according to your area of specialization. Again, for quarter one, region 10, region 7, region 12, and car. What about for quarter two? Madali ba ito? Madali ba? Madali. Ano ba ito? Mass teach o mass learn? Okay. 4A 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 6 Huwag pagsamay ng 6 at saka 3. Pareho kayo malaki. 1 and 9. Okay, again. Regions 1 Regions 4A Region 6 and Nine. Okay, that's for quarter two. What about for quarter three? Region. 4B. Ano pa pong region? 4B. Quarter three. R. What else? Five. And... 